everyone, how are you today? You are going to learn how to play the mellow phone. This is a mellow phone. It's in the key of F, just like the French horn. So, many of you guys have been wanting lessons on how to play the mellow phone. So, I'm going to briefly go over a couple of things here for your first lesson. Now, I'm a section leader at the band I go to that I'm in. And the rookies who come into the band every year always have a problem with holding the horn. Now, it gets on my nerves. I've seen one person try to play the horn like this, which is improper. Or they try to play the horn like this. I mean, not for fun. I'm talking about they actually tried to play the horn permanently as a permanent position like this. So, there's a certain way you're supposed to hold the horn. Okay? This is so basic. Pinky goes in this ring. Okay? A horn has a ring in it. That's where your pinky is. Thumb goes in the back of the third valve. Or the first valve. One, two, three. Yeah, but it goes right here. So, right there. Alright. Thumb goes here. See? Both thumbs. And the rest of your hand goes here. Okay? Inside here, wrapped around the valves. Okay? Hand wrapped around the valves. Okay? Now, after we hold the horn properly okay in this position now some players hold play the horn like flat finger now me personally I find it more difficult for me to get the valves down when I play flat finger see having my hand flat and playing like that is flat also if I'm playing doing a run which is a series of notes together um, if I'm playing flat fingered, if the run is fast and I try to play it flat fingered, my fingers would be too slow. So, I would miss the timing on the notes when I play, or I would be behind the beat. So, what I do is, I play with my fingers going down. With my fingers going down, it's heavier on the valve. So I'll be able to press the note quicker than when I if I do if I do flat fingered. It's quicker than me. And that's from experience. Okay? So you don't want to play fat flat fingered. You wanna press the valve down. It's a valve, you put the press it down. Okay? Press it. So I put my fingers the way I can press it. Alright. So we got the position, we got how we're going to hold our hands on the horn. Alright, we have that. Alright, now with body language as you're playing. Do you play going down like this? Do you play up there like that? Uh, do you play sideways? Those things matter. Okay, do you play like this? Those things matter. Yes, I've seen players play like this, like that, like it's something wrong with them. Like they're on the toilet and they're trying to get it out. They're trying to squeeze it out. Okay, so you want to be relaxed. Okay, you want to be relaxed. So hopefully you can see me properly. Hey, you want to be relaxed. Shoulders back. You don't want to be all tensed. Okay, it, it. If you are tensed. It changes the way your sound is to the horn. If you're relaxed, it's much better. And it's easier for you to play relaxed. If you play tense, the horn will sound tense. So you want to be relaxed. So that's, that's basically how you hold the horn. And that is so basic. You've got to learn how to hold the horn properly. Hi, right, quick lesson. And buzzing. How do you teach a beginner how to buzz? I had some questions from some band directors who don't play brass instruments. And now they're 
in the classroom first year, whatever, uh, first couple years teaching. So when you're teaching somebody how to play uh, brass instrument, a lot of people start with the mouthpiece. So what you want to tell them to, to get a buzz is you want to bring the, the lips together. The top lip and the bottom lip, they need to meet. And it's a delicate balance of firmness and softness. Uh, the corners are, are firm, and as you move into the lip, you're going to get uh, relaxed, uh, but yet firm. you got to keep the lips in that position, but you have to push air out, and it has to get past. The air has to get past. So that's what it looks like on the inside of the cup. That's what's happening. So we generally tell the students to say M and hold it. M. You can see we got tight corners right here. M and blow air. It's kind of like uh, spitting out a popcorn seed. And that kind of motion. So you got that M. You maintain that and blow air out. Now, if a student blows in the mouthpiece and all they get is air, they are doing well. Okay, some people are going to get a buzz. Some people are not going to get a buzz. That's fine. So I'm about to t teach you what to do in each case. So if a person gets a buzz, that's great. Just go with that and, and do some buzzing exercises with them. You can buzz like the first few lessons in their beginning book. That's 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 that'll be perfect. M. Whatever pitch comes out, just work with that pitch. M. M. You can get any pitch. Just work with that pitch. Now, if they get only air, M. That's fine. What you do is eventually you want to bring them to the trumpet, take the tuning slide out. I have a video about lead pipe buzzing. That's what you're going to do. You're going to take out the tuning slide, so then you'll only be left with the lead pipe. Let's see if I can show you this here. Sorry. When you put the mouthpiece in and take the tuna slide out it's just straight straight pipe so if they get air only the pipe will create the resistance required to get a, a sound and you're taken care of sorry for, sorry for this video Hold on. so you blow in the pipe air only <laughs> And you'll get the, the resistance from the pipe, and you, you will get a sound. M. And the student will feel like they, they, they would have accomplished a small win. So th from there, and I'm going through this very fast. I mean, this might take days or hours, you know, minutes. It depends on the student. But if you put the tuning slide back in. Put the tuna slide back in, and then you can get a pitch. Same motion. M. Or if they're really tight, they're going to get a higher pitch. So that's, that's where you begin with the buzz. I hope that helps. Okay, so kali ni aku akan ajar tentang body posture korang, cara korang nak pegang melophone tu. So, aku akan gunakan trumpet sebab aku ada trumpet je kat rumah ni untuk tunjukkan contoh. So, first posture adalah instrumen down. Instrumen down ni korang pegang instrumen tu straight je. Tak ada sengit-sengit ke apa. Straight je. And then korang punya lengan tu, posture dia mesti bentuk V. V yang terbalik. Faham tak? 
untuk uh, untuk instrumen trumpet dengan dengan melophon dua-dua sama aja memang kurang akan pegang macam tu okey lagi satu pula kurang punya paras mouthpiece tu mesti sama level dengan kurang punya mata sama paras okey lagi satu aku nak ingatkan bila korang pegang instrumen ni body korang mesti relax badan korang mesti straight tegak and mendada jangan apa jangan bongkok-bongkok bahu korang pun kena relax je jatuhkan jangan bila korang instrument up instrument down korang naikkan bahu tu kadang korang tak perasan tau so uh, aku just ingatkan biasanya lah ok so next posture instrument up instrument up ni dia lebih kurang sama je dengan instrument down tadi cuma korang up kan instrument tu and kekalkan posture lengan korang bentuk V terbalik tu ok so untuk instrument up tu je ok uh, lagi satu untuk next gambar ni pula aku tunjuk cara um, position up korang tu dia boleh straight 90 degree ataupun naikkan sikit ok so kalau ikutkan naikkan sikit korang tinggikan sikit tu dia punya posture tu nampak lagi nice lah biasanya ok so next yang last kali ni adalah cara korang pegang instrumen korang masa tengah sedia ok korang pegang guna tangan kanan oops maaf tangan kiri ya ok tangan kiri korang gunakan tangan kiri orang cuma sengitkan sikit tak sampai dalam 45 degree macam tu ok kaki korang untuk semua posture ni mestilah rapat eh macam korang dalam baris sedia ok rapat and bentuk V juga kaki ok so tu saja terima kasih